Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy. Y'all know who it is. It's your boy Rico. Back at it again. It's too damn early to be going live like this, man. But hey, shit happens. So if you guys have been living under a rock and don't know what's happening, y'all better open up that phone and check out what the Jets are doing because the Jets ain't playing games, man. And it was such a small move, but a big move, only because it affects us that much more. So let me break it down for everybody that is just tuning in. Welcome. Good morning. I hope you guys brushed your teeth before you guys came out here because <laughs> it ain't right. Anyway, so we have moved up from 21st to the 12th, right? Because we had no, no indications of, you know what I'm saying? I don't say indications. I don't say indications. It didn't look really good. It didn't look good for us for to move from 21st all the way down to the top 10. It was just too tough to do. But McBean made some made some things happen. He moved from 21st to 12th, gave away Cordy Glenn. So we are now halfway to where we want to be in the top 10, right? So now we're kind of chilling. We're doing free agency. We signed a few guys, which I'm going to do a video on for YouTube. Y'all check that out later. But anyway, so now the Jets make a move. The Jets move up from sixth pick to three with the Colts. They gave away a boatload. They swapped picks for the first. Then they gave away two second-round picks and a few other picks here and there. doesn't matter. They are now picking three. We are picking 12. What do you do in an instance like this, right? Because right now, Bean was ready to chill and say, you know what? Now we got a chance to breathe, right? And... Right now, shit, my ring light is coming right up on my face like that. It is what it is. So B McBean, I'll say Bean in particular was like, yo, I can chill now. You know what I mean? We made some moves. We made a bit of splash. You know what I mean? We paid a few people, to lay and all that stuff. So let's just chill. Let's just relax. Let's breathe and let's go from there. Uh-uh. Jets were like, nah, not today. We're getting that quarterback. Now, this is where things get tricky. It gets tricky. Pardon me because... I'm in my in my, my lair, and in my lair happens to be the pipe for when uh, a faucet turns on. So anyway, good morning, by the way, everybody who was just joining in. Good morning, good morning, good morning. But anyway, so that being said, the Jets are now at three. So let's play a game. Let's play a game, shall we? So the Browns are picking number one. The Browns just picked up star quarterback in Tyrod Taylor. I'm sorry, I couldn't keep a straight face. I apologize. I tried. I tried to keep a straight face. Star quarterback Tyrod Taylor has joined the Cleveland Browns. And if you saw the press conference by my man Hugh Jackson, which I really like, Hugh Jackson was gushing, you know what I'm saying, over my man Tyrod Taylor, talking about this is the face of the franchise, blah, 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 talking a whole bunch of bull. And nobody, nobody's, nobody is, nobody's, nobody's buying that, bruh. We are in the year 2018. We've seen all the trash that happens, all the games that are played is just recycled. Just like, you know what I mean, clothing. You know what I mean? You had sweatpants with the, the rubber bands at the bottom that phased out and they're back. You had leather pants that were back in the day that they're back. You know what I'm saying? You got, you, you know, corduroy pants. Are, nah, corduroy pants ain't never coming back. I'm sorry. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not about to go there. But y'all know what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is this. These games are played all the time. We cannot say, oh, we're just going to chill and, and, and take for what it is. No. So what do you do? The Browns are picking number one. They got their franchise quarterback. Do they, are they now going to still pick a quarterback? Because they're, no, they're picking number one and four. So if they're going to pick somebody with the first pick, are you going quarterback? Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. Maybe they go Minka Fitzpatrick. You know what I'm saying? The the guy that, like, I haven't watched too much film on Minka, but they say he's a baller. I saw, actually, that's a lie. I saw some tape. He's nice. The boy can play. Number one overall pick, though? Eh, I don't know. So let's just say they take Sam Darnold. That's what people are talking about. I personally don't think Sam Darnold is all that, personally. If you guys saw my ranking of the top six quarterbacks, Darnold is like four, I think, if I, if I remember correctly. Anyway, Darnold goes to the Browns. All right? 
Darnold goes to the Browns. I'm writing this shit down. Okay? So now what? They don't want, they're not going to take Saquon Barkley. They just picked up Carlos Hyde. And if you guys think Carlos Hyde is a scrub, wake the hell up. Wipe, wipe the cob, you know what I mean? Wipe the sleep out your eyes because that boy can play. All right? And they got Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson can play as well. So y'all didn't think I knew my football, right? Y'all better wake up. It's your boy Rico back at it again. Anyway, so number two. We got the Giants. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Here's where it gets tricky. The Giants may want to take a quarterback, and they say he might go with Josh Rosen. By the way, if you guys, how dare you, first of all, if you guys are not sharing this feed right now, shame on you guys. Take a moment, press that little share button, and put it on their page. Just so some of your friends that haven't woken up yet, they'll see it on your feed, and then they'll be able to check it out later. All right? And then they'll follow Buffalo Fanatics, and that's how we grow the community. Y'all got to wake up. Help me out here. Help me out here. You want to get this community, the biggest community out there. This is how you do it. You share. You share quality content right here. Anyway, moving on. So you got the Giants picking up two. So if the Giants pick Saquon Barkley, let's just say they pick Saquon Barkley because the Lord knows they need a running back. They need a running back. I don't care who they signed. You know what I'm saying? They need a tailback. So Rosen gone. Here come the Jets. Who are the Jets taking? I think they're taking Baker Mayfield. I think that's who they have their mind set on, Baker Mayfield. Think about it. Think about it. Now, and this is where if you're the Bills, you don't give a damn because maybe Baker, Baker Mayfield is not on your radar. It is not on your radar. So you're like, yo, bump it, take it. You know what I'm saying? Because then there's Allen that they can take as well. Maybe they're taking Allen. Great. I think Buffalo likes Allen, personally. I personally think Buffalo likes Allen. Anyway, moving on. Here's where we are with this. So the Giants grab, we'll say, we'll just call Rosen. We'll just take the quarterback off, off the board because they, they're going to need someone to replace my man uh, Eli Manning. I don't know how, how many more years Eli Manning has. I think Eli is, what, 38 now or something like that, 37, 38, I'm not sure. You're going to have to replace my man soon, soon enough. By the way, thank you for sharing. I'm noticing that the, the numbers are going up. Keep sharing. That's how we do it. That's how we grow the community. And we move on. So here come the damn Jets. Why is it that the AFC East always has to make things complicated for the Bills? I, I swear. I swear this is what it is. The last two years, it's like everybody decided to migrate to the damn AFC East to make things tougher for us. It don't matter. We made the playoffs last year, but shit. They always do. Go somewhere else. Go to the NFC. Make it tough for them. We already got Tom Brady we got to deal with. Now you got to make, you got to freaking complicate shit. Yo, I'm not, we're not in the mood for that shit, man. We're trying to, we're trying to move forward with, with less difficulty. But I mean, shit, when it's, when it's too tough for them, it's just right for us, right? So that's how we do it. So let's just say the Jets pick Baker Mayfield. So Mayfield to the Jets. Now who's picking out four? The Browns. So the Browns already got Darnold. They have a quarterback already. So they're probably going to go Barkley. Let's just say the Browns go Barkley, which I don't think they're going to do. So they can't go Barkley. So they go, I don't know, who? Who cares? It's not a quarterback. So there goes the Browns. The Browns are next. Then it's Denver. This, my friends, is where we need to get to if we want the guy that we that we, are, that we want to change the franchise. You want to change this franchise? You go after your quarterback right here. Denver is listening. I'm sure they're listening. They got Case Keenum. They like Case Keenum. They got Paxton Lynch, which is a, a former second rounder. So now we got to make something happen with Denver. You have to. You got to. Okay? So if we can make a trade with Denver, who are you willing to? Who are you risking it for? That's what they call it now, nowadays. That's what the kids call it now. Who are you going to risk it for? Risk it all for. Who are you risking it for? Because right now, Darnold is off the board. Whoop, gone. Rosen off the board to the Giants. I would say that they're probably going to try to get a replacement for Eli Manning. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Mayfield goes to the Jets. So that's three quarterbacks. One, two, three, gone. Then the Browns pick again, gone. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're picking whatever the Browns are going to pick. Then you're at Denver. This is where we have to decide what we are going to do. Is being ready to just sit and chill and say, nah, we good. Because he even said it in his press conference. You guys didn't call it if you guys didn't see it. He said, 
Even when I'm on vacation, I don't chill. I don't. I, there's no time to breathe. So you know, right now, when the minute he got his hands up to chill and said, "All right, cool, I'm gonna I'm relax," you know what I'm saying? And then he saw what ticker, the just just moved up. No, 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 no. You know that meme when when they say uh, when someone does some fly or some dumb, one motherfucker says, "Hold my beer." Bean, this is where you come in with that comment and say, "Hold my beer." Y'all made y'all better make something happen. Now here's the deal: you make something happen. Be ready to give up a whole lot. If we are going to make something happen, you go and you make a trade with Denver right this second. Do it now. Now Denver has leverage because now we are we are going to look thirsty. We are going to look thirsty because right now we were chilling. We didn't have any indication to move, right? We moved up to the 12th. We good. We're given the impression that we are good, but we know we're not. Our quarterbacks are McCarron and Nate Peterman, my guy. Y'all already know what it is. Now, can we settle to stay at 12? This is the real question, though. Real talk. Can we settle to stay at 12? And I ask this question for this reason. Because we know we want to try to keep the bean. The bean likes their picks. They like having multiple picks. If you like your picks, you stay at 12. You still have your 12th and your 22nd pick. You still got that. So... What are you willing to do? What are you, how much are you willing to risk? All right. And that's what I want to ask you guys. So now that you guys know the scenario, you guys know exactly what's popping. You guys know uh, where we are at this point. I will now start taking your questions. So without further ado, let me see what we got. I got to catch up on some because y'all been firing away with comments. So now, and here's another question too. Are we now pressed to make a deal with the Giants? Are the Giants that much in love with having a quarterback prepared to take over, prepared to take over for my man, Eli Manning? Because that is our window of opportunity. If we had any opportunity, it is the Giants. And that way we can pick whoever we please. At 12, here's who you're going to be left with. Lamar Jackson, which I, you guys already know, I'm a big fan of. But he's Tyrod 2.0. Shut your mouth. It is not even close. And I'll tell you to your face. I wish I was on live with my phone because I could just go live with whoever so I can put y'all in your place. But that's just what it is. That's just me. That's just me. However, if Bills stay at 12, we are now, um, I guess, I want, I want to say to the mercy of everybody else. Because now we have, to, we have to wait. We wait, right? So are we willing to do that? Are we willing to do that? Because I'm, I'm about to pull up the draft order, because sometimes my, 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 my mind gets a little foggy. Um, so let me just read some of your stuff. So Victor MDS says, Barkley will land with the Giants. So if Barkley lands with the Giants, that keeps Rosen off the board. So then Rosen could be the Jets. Jets could want Rosen. Okay, so you know what? Let's let's flip it. Victor Diaz, thank you for bringing that. Let me, let's flip it now, because now this, the, the, the scenario changes now. Let's just go... Browns go with Darnold, okay? Darnold gone. Barkley gone, okay? Now we're just going with a, a different avenue. Barkley gone to the second. I, I got to pick up that draft order just so I have it. So forgive me while I do this. And I'm going to read some more stuff. John Elway said Case Keenum is their guy. So if, if Case Keenum is their guy, we have an opportunity. There's your trade opportunity right there. Uh, let me see here. Draft order. Listen, good morning, everybody. If you guys are just tuning in right now, please take a moment, share this broadcast right this second. We got to grow the community. We got to make this thing big. Buffalo Fanatics is taking over. This is, I'll tell you right now, this is the biggest, biggest brand house out there for Buffalo representing the community. I'm telling you right now, if, if it's, it goes Buffalo Bills and then Fanatics, that's what it is. The the Bills Mafia is is cool. Mad respect for the Bills Mafia, but right now, we are surging. Just look. Just look around. Look at the IG. Look at Twitter. Look at all that stuff, man. It's real. It's real in the streets, right? All right. So check this out. The draft order. I just gotta. I just gotta pick it up, just cause I need to make sure that we good. All right. So Cleveland, we got that. We got that. Okay. You got uh, Indianapolis just traded. Denver at five. Jets at six. So now the goal is back to the Colts. Colts don't need a quarterback, so you know they're gonna they acquire picks to fill holes on their team. Tampa doesn't need a quarterback. They got Winston. Uh, Chicago got Trubisky. You know what I mean? Uh, Fran has uh, Jimmy G. 
So Oakland, they got their car. So we have a grand opportunity to still have some picks. So who are we comfortable with? So Barkley goes to the Giants. Jets take, who do you think they'd rather, Rosen? Or would they rather Mayfield? It's one of those things. Mayfield or Rosen, who are they going for? Actually, I want to see what y'all think. If the Jets are picking quarterback, are they going with Rosen or are they going with Mayfield? Because that makes a big deal. I like Mayfield a lot. Um, out of all the quarterbacks, he's he's my number one. And then he, Jackson's my number two. And then Rosen. But Rosen's dope. I like Rosen as well. Um, I would give up that much more for QB. By now, that's Eric Sadowski. Uh, Dan McCarty says Rosen. Shit, you guys are mixed, man. Leroy says Mayfield. Rosen, Rosen, Mayfield. Yo, that's a mix. That's really a mix. So here's the deal. I think the Jets are taking Mayfield. So let's just say Jets take Mayfield. Let me tell you something. To play in New York, New Jersey, whatever you guys want to call it, that in itself is a big market and it's a tough market. If you guys know basketball, the Knicks, when they're trash, they hear it from their fans. You are trash and it's a big old boo right to your face. I'm telling you, the Jets are no different. You know New Yorkers. They don't play. They'll tell you straight to your face, are you trash or are you nice? So that's, that's what it comes down to. So if Mayfield goes there, his attitude would be perfect for a place like the Jets. That creates problems for us. But you know what? It is what it is. This is the NFL. Everybody's balling here and there. So the Jets take Mayfield. All right? Here come the Browns. The Browns pick whoever they want because they got Darnold. There comes De here comes Denver. Denver doesn't need a quarterback. So Denver picks whoever. All right? So six. We got the Colts picking at six. They don't need a quarterback. That's gone. Seven. Who's picking at seven again? We got Tampa. So right now, here's who's available at quarterback. <laughs> Everybody. So we may chill at 12. We may still be in position to relax at 12 and get Rosen. He falls to 12. Yo, it's a very real possibility. It's a very real possibility. You got Rosen, Allen. That's still, that's still there. Yo, you can't tell me that we are not able to stay at 12. Folks, I'm telling you right now, that could be how it shapes out. So maybe Bean is in a position to just say, ah, you know what? I'm a chill. I'm good. I don't need to do that. What do you guys think? Am I, am I off? If I'm off, let me know and, and explain it because I'm going to try, I'm going to start try to read some of your comments here because right now most people think that Rosen, oh, hold on a second. Ryan Boyd says, uh, LOL, I wouldn't worry about the Jets. They have a lot of holes. They gave up a lot to move to the three spot. Only one could be was going in in the top five unless Denver got bored, but I wouldn't trust anything the Jets do. So you said a whole lot of stuff there, but not a whole lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they could or they, they wouldn't. That's, what, that's exactly what I got out of that. Ismar Alvarado says, I don't think we can go wrong in Rosen or Mayfield. Yeah, but Rosen, Rosen could be available, and it's who the Jets – right now, the Jets are screwing this whole thing up. Or the Jets are making this fantastic for us. So this, this, this move to 12 is huge because we bypass a lot of teams that need a quarterback. Chargers needed one. Cardinals needed one. Um, and Ravens could have taken – Mayfield. I've, I've seen Mayfield uh, to, to, the, to the Ravens as well because I don't think uh, my man um, Igor over there at, at the Ravens um, is that great, first of all. just That's just my opinion. Um, so we got uh, Leroy Winslow says, and what if the Browns do what the Browns do best and botch the draft and don't draft a quarterback? I can't see them. Listen, they have a new GM in Dorsey. Dorsey will not pass up on that. If, I, if my memory serves me correct, Dorsey was with the Chiefs just last year. And what did the Chiefs do? They traded with the Bills so they can get Mahomes. You think they're going to – and they had Alex Smith. They had Alex Smith. So you think they're just going to chill? Nah, man, they're taking a quarterback. They got two first-round picks in the first five picks. You pick your quarterback. And they know what Tyrod can give. They know it. So you just have your quarterback chill behind Tyrod until Tyrod starts doing Tyrod things, and then you're boom, you move him, just like the Bills did to him when they put Peterman in. Y'all know what it is. I'm not talking shit. It's the truth. If we were standing pat at 12, I think we should have been more aggressive or in areas of free agency. Jets are not trading to number three pick. 
uh, from Mayfield. You don't think so? I don't know, man. Nick Ma says they ain't taking Mayfield. So if they're not taking Mayfield, who they're taking? They're taking Rosen? Rosen to the Jets? So if Rosen goes to the Jets, Mayfield comes to Buffalo. I like that. I can I can handle that. So the Lord Lord knows we need a quarterback that's got a fiery, you know what I mean? Get these boys ready and let's ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, everything about Mayfield I like. You know what I'm saying? Nothing ever give it to him. Walk on, earn his spot, earn his stripes, and balling. Gets himself a Heisman. You have to respect the brother's game, man. Game, peep, game, game, respect, game. You got to respect it. Ja, Tyson, uh, Jeff Tyson says, LA will take Rosen or Allen if available. He just got Keenum. And he's got Paxton Lynch. Even though Paxton Lynch isn't trash per se, he's not, I don't know, I can't see Denver grabbing that. Holy, yo, I even, so, Allen's available too. And I have a feeling the Bills like Allen. I really have a feeling the Bills like Allen. They're not really talking too much about him. They're just doing what they do. They're just staying under the radar, saying very little. Uh, I think one of the questions to uh, McBean was, "Do what co- are you planning to meet with certain quarterbacks or something of that nature? He says, I plan to meet with all of them, and then we'll make a decision. Because you you have to meet with them to know what guy you're bringing to your team. You can't just, you know what I mean, stay on the hush and then grab him, and then he's a bust the whole time. You need to ask these guys all these questions, know who they are, know what they're about, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So he plans to meet with a whole whack of them. The, and he didn't say specifically anybody. He just said the top guys that you guys are already talking about. So take it for what you say. Uh, no way no way. Ray Rosen falls to 12. I don't think Rosen falls. Mike Hooker, I don't think he falls to 12 either. That's why originally I had him going to the, to the Giants. I think the Giants are ready to move on from Eli. They almost did it last year. And then McAdoo just got let go. Um, so uh, whether that's a good idea or not, who knows? Jamie Campbell says Allen at 12. I can totally see Allen going to the Bills at 12. And the media is going to love it. They're going to say, wow, the Bills did great. Mark my words. <laughs> if Allen falls to 12, they're going to praise McBean so hard, bro. They're going to be all over McBean's D. They're going to be like, yo, he's patient. He moved up to 12. He didn't panic. GM of the year, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? And shit, if it happens, we'll take it. We will take it. Ray Patterson says Buffalo may suck. Buffalo may say fuck it. Trade to trade with 49ers and Buffalo get Raquan Smith and get Mason Rudolph at 22. Don't want him, but whatever. But why would we do that? Why why would we trade with the 49ers and for Raquan Smith and get Mason Rudolph? We could just chill and probably get them both regardless. We don't gotta trade with them. Nah, 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 nah. You tripping, bro. You tripping. Ray Patterson, you tripping. Uh Cardinals can move up in the top 10. The Cardinals could very much move up in the top 10, but they just paid Donald $20 million for one year. Um, not Donald, the uh, freaking Bradford. Go figure. That's a lot of money for, for a cat that, that stays on the, on the injury bench. But anyway, that's just me. Um, John Lucas Jr. says they have to believe their guy could make it to 12. I think that's what they're, they're banking on. They're banking on if we just chill and we let our guy go to 12, we good. We are good. Uh, I would rather have Allen or Mayfield. Uh, we can still trade up to number two. Uh, that's from Billy Schwab. We could. Listen, the possibilities are endless. We picked all these draft picks for a reason. We have two first-round draft picks, two second-round draft picks, three third-round draft picks. Yo, if we want to make movements, we can make movements. Believe me when I tell you that. It's just that we've got to make the right moves that so we have enough picks to fill holes. Because if you think that we are done at filling holes on our team – you are mistaken, my good friend, because we still have places to fill. Our lab back and crew is, is mediocre at best right now. Preston Brown is gone. If you, guys have, uh, if you guys aren't realizing, Preston Brown is gone. He went to the Cincinnati Bengals on a one-year deal. Surprised at that, by the way. I thought he was going to try to get a little more, a little more bank uh, for his buck, but I guess his, his 104 tackles just wasn't enough for the Bills to say, yeah, we paying you a lot of money. So he said, yo, I'll just dip and go somewhere else. So he's going to try to prove himself again. So it is what it is. Sometimes things got to happen that way. Rosen won't last. So a lot of people think that Rosen will not last. Um, I'm probably, I'm actually in agreement with you guys. Uh, Cardinals will trade up for Rosen. Um, but do they have enough picks to do that? Do they have the capital to do that? That's the thing. Uh, I have been saying stay at 12. Only Jets and Browns will take a QB. If the Browns do Brown stuff and botch the draft, but got to watch the Cardinals jumping up. I can see the Cardinals jumping up. You're right. Jamie M. Campbell says, Allen will fall to us at 12. That is a very, very real possibility. Uh, Adam Snyder says, I think they want Jackson. 
the Bills will have to move up again between 6 and 10. Someone like Arizona will try to jump us for Jackson if that's who we want. I don't know. I don't – see, I'm not talking about Jackson too much because I, I just feel like I'm not going to talk about a guy that I like a lot, but you can get him in the later rounds. I just I – just, that's how I feel. Um, Mayfield is the guy that probably teams would, would prefer. Um, Allen, to me, is a toss-up between Allen and Jackson. If I'm choosing between those two, I'm jumping all over Jackson. Um, but I can see the Bills going for Allen. I just can see it. I can see it. I'm telling you. Uh, Rob Fertasia. Fertasia. I don't know how to – I hope I'm not bushing your name, man. Giants and Broncos are the wild card. If one of them, if one or both take a QB, we try to wait and, and, uh, and we'll be without. It's true. That's the thing. You can't sit on your hands in situations like this. I just gave you a bit of a drink. You can't, you can't sit on your hands – and 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 do nothing because if you sit on your hands and not proactive uh and you try to react when it's too late it's a wrap you ain't going nowhere bro ashraf joseph says you're off on denver rico they paid 18 millions per year for case which is tyrod money and they will only give up a two or they gave them they only gave him a two-year deal make no mistake they're drafting a franchise quarterback and will move up to do so you think denver will move up to the two spot Shit, I mean, shoot, it could be possible. It very much, it very well could be possible. I'm not gonna lie, Damien. Speak on me, man. Talk to me. What you got? You got? You have anything to add to this? Talk to me, my man. Uh, what do we got? Joe McDonald says, uh, uh, "I'll freak if we brick this." Nah, man, we're not gonna freak, bro. We're not gonna freak. Lamar, Lamar, Vic 2.0. Uh, Jamie Cortesy, Cortez, Cortesy or whatever. Uh, Lamar is Vic 2.0. I'd say like a 3.0. He's the he's the he's the updated. He's like the software up version two software up from Vic, uh, because he can actually make reads down the field. Vic um, would make his reads, but then after one read or two, he'd be gone. Jackson will actually stay in the pocket and rather get hit in the mouth before he takes off. Taking off is very easy for a guy like Lamar Jackson. Easy, like it's it's clockwork to him. So for him to just sit in the pocket and wait and read, that's what uh, a lot of people don't realize that he can do. They just think he's just another black brother quarterback that just all he wants to do is run around the damn field. It's a shame, but that's what that's what he gets. Uh, Sean Wyman says Jackson at twelve, OL at twenty two. Bean made it clear he was he wants uh, he was beast on both sides of the line. Listen, man, if you ever want to build a championship team, you got to build from the inside out, and by that. You want to make your your linemen, your trenches. You build your trenches and you move out. You know what I'm saying? You get your linemen. You get your DT, your defensive ends. You know what I'm saying? And you move out to your corners. I mean, corners are really good too. Don't get me wrong. But offensively, your receivers, you just, you don't, I don't know. I, that's just another topic for another day on that on that topic there. Uh, Luis Naylor says, uh, oh, Julia says, they should stay put and we got too many holes to fill. So if we stay put and Allen happens to fall to us, what do we do at 22? Are you going linebacker at 22? Because we just lost Preston Brown. We got an aging, um, an aging Lorenzo. We got um, Milano. We got Vallejo. And we got a few other guys on the squad right now um, that they're not, they're not like pressing guys. Are you like, oh, that guy? You know what I'm saying? They're just guys that are on the team that, could, that are going to be battling for position. So do we take running uh, linebacker at 22? That's the question. Um, Eric Sadowski says five QBs ain't coming off the board in the first round just because we want a QB. Everybody thinks that they will be gone. That's probably the stigma. Honestly, it's probably the stigma right now. A lot of people think that if we don't make moves, everyone's going to be gone. It's going to be a fire sale. But let me tell you this though, in the NFL, you ever hear when, the, when one guy picks, uh, I don't know, like, first of all, first team picks a receiver. There goes all the receivers because everybody starts panicking. Oh, shit, this is when receivers are going to get started and being picked. So they start picking receivers. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's that way. One guy, one team picks a quarterback, another team picks a quarterback, and then you panic. It's like drafting. You know when you guys do fantasy draft? All of a sudden, somebody picks, everybody, everybody's rolling. Everybody knows, and their mama knows, you pick running backs first in, in fantasy draft. Then you move on to certain other things. But one guy goes and picks a receiver in the first round. You're like, what the hell? Is there is there something going on? Is, is there a shortage of receivers? Then you start panicking and picking receivers. Experienced fantasy players know. But it's the ones that are rookies that panic and, and pick a Antonio Brown. Antonio's pretty nice. I'd say Larry Fitzgerald, you know what I mean, number one. Whoa. Settle down, big fella. Settle down. So, um, But that's sometimes the way things happen, man. One team picks a team, and then – a whole strew, a whole 
crew of that position starts going. Sophie says, I want us to pick Shaquan Griffin. Kid is a beast. Uh, Shaquem Griffin, excuse me. Yo, Shaquem Griffin, man, he made himself some money. He made himself some money, man. And, dude, you ran a 4-3? To me, it looks slower than a 4-3, like, on, on, by looking at it. But, shit, 4-3 is a 4-3. So, uh, yeah, he, uh, he did pretty well, man. He did pretty well for himself. Jeff Tyson says, a bunch of holes left. We are most likely not moving up to the top five. Pick six is possibility. Throw in Hughes, clean up space. They say they're not getting rid of Hughes, but I never believe anything they say until Hughes is on the roster on September 8th or 9th when we play. So um, that's where I'm sticking to it. But anyway, uh, take a take UTEP defensive end and Boise defensive line in the first two in the first with our first two picks. Nick Miles, you crazy boy, you can't do that. Is Compton going to sign? It's looking good. I don't see Compton not signing. I like his attitude. I watched a few things on on uh, on on the comp on the computer and, and looking his name up and you know trying to get to know some of these guys. His attitude seems to be like you know what I mean the true you know what I mean. Hey, the head buster linebacker guy looks pretty dope. Um, Roberto Martinez says, I think Bean knew this was hap- This would happen. Allen at 12, UTEP Hernandez at 22. Hmm. You think he knew? Shit, if you're a GM and you've been doing this 20 plus years, you kind of have an idea of what these GMs, you know what I mean? We don't know what these guys do, man. They may, they may sit there all in the damn group chat, <laughs> you know, just sitting there, just chit chatting away, you know what I'm saying? And, and they're like, yeah, so, Yo, you really made that jump to three? Yo, good for you, man. So, are we? Are, is this a competition? Are we? You want me to jump to number two? Is this how we gonna do it? I don't know. They're probably all in the, the group chat, just chatting it up with each other. Who knows, man? Let me see. Uh, Tim Smith says, "Who's taking Barkley?" People think the Giants are taking Barkley, but a running back in the first ten picks is not absurd. It's been done. Barkley seems to be one guy that is that everybody loves. I mean, the guy killed it at the at the combine, and even then, he says that he could have did way better. So go figure about that. Uh, so let's get off this um, this quarterback talk for a quick second. Let's talk about the signings that we just that we put through. So we bring in Star Letulule, Letulule, right? We bring in um, my man from the Redskins. I don't know why I just was saying his name not too long ago. Um, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, what the hell's his name? Now I'm getting a brain fart. Who we just signed from the Redskins? Anyway, y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, and then we bring in, um, we bring in. Uh, why am I getting a brain fart? All of a sudden, sometimes I get it. I get a brain fart. You know. Anyways, y'all know who we brought in. McCarron. Excuse me. So McCarron. Let me just speak on McCarron first. I want y'all to realize something. McCarron. I don't want to call him Bridge. But I will say this, McCarron will definitely compete for that spot. He's not given that position. He's not going to be deemed the starter on a two-year deal. Not happening on a 10 mil, $10 million. No, 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 no. Not happening. So let me tell you this. He will compete with Peterman. This is 100% fact he will compete with Peterman. Peterman and McCarron will go to it toe-to-toe. It's not a sexy battle. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it's not a sexy battle, but I'll tell you right now, it's going to be a good one. I, I guarantee you guys, we will be paying attention, and these two will go at it. Whoever the rookie is that we draft will be amongst the, 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 the competition, but I think they're going to make the, – the rookie is going to have to outplay both McCarron and Peterman. And those two will battle. I can't tell you who's going to win that battle because I think McCarron is actually a good quarterback. Um, if you guys watched that playoff game against the, the Steelers, dude was down 15 nothing or something like that. And he brought them back into the game. Something that we can't say about quarterbacks that we've had in the past. Now, that being said, if we bring in a rookie and he out, if he beats them both, great. But McCarron, do not sleep on McCarron, but he's not our future. We are going to draft a guy. Here's the leverage that Buffalo Bills have with drafting a McCarron. Let's just say McCarron comes in and kills it, right? And let's just say the quarterback that happens to be our guy is Josh Allen. Let's just – we'll just put it that way because I just feel the Bills like Josh Allen. So Josh Allen is on the bench, right, learning the ways and so on and so forth. McCarron has a monster year. We go back to the playoffs, and he gets us a playoff win. We are now in a position to, A, extend him and say, you know what, this is our guy. And then Josh Allen sits and chills. And then, you want in? Are you trying to get in the camera? No, I'm trying to get in the camera. Okay, give me what, what you want to tell me. Uh, how do we set up that game? As, uh, not right now. Not right now. I'm going to do it when I'm done because daddy's almost done, okay? So, that being said, we have an opportunity to, we have the leverage. The leverage is 
McCarron kills it, does extremely well, and gets into the playoffs and gets – and I'm, I'm, ex- I'm over-exaggerating here. So he does all those things well. We now have leverage because now he's going to be on a one-year deal afterwards on a very minimal contract. And if we do decide to move on from him, we lose at the dead cap is like $2 million. That's nothing. We've let go of people with more. So we, he can be traded and he's, we will have leverage. We will move him and we can probably pick up more picks is what I'm saying. Cause there's going to be QB needy teams. Now, the good thing is we have a guy that just learns behind McCarron and Peterman and they go at it. So Peterman beats out McCarron. We have McCarron on our team. Somebody's going to need someone. We can trade him. That's where the leverage comes in with the Bills. If he does great, we hold on to him. We extend him and it's fantastic. If he does fantastic, but we are guys moving up the depth charts, meaning our rookie, we're, we're not going to want McCarron to, to keep going while we have a hot rookie ready to get in there and, and lead the way and start taking over this franchise. You know what I'm saying? If we have to Aaron Rodgers, our rookie, if y'all know exactly what I'm talking about, then so be it. Rookie sits on his ass for two years, lets McCarron do it. We let McCarron finish out his contract, and we don't sign him, and then we let our guy go in. But I can't see that happening. If anything, we will try to get something for him. Or Peterman ends up getting traded. Who knows? But those are the scenarios that can happen at the quarterback position. Um, and those are very real scenarios. Now, Star Tulele. In my humble opinion, I think we overpaid just a tad for, for Star. Um, the last couple of years, he hasn't been great. You know what I'm saying? Um, statistically, he hasn't. But I don't think we brought him in for statistical reasons. I think, he, A, he knows the scheme. B, he's going to be, and I'm not, gonna call, I'm not calling him Vince Woolfork. I'm not. But he is going to be like a Vince, a Vince Wolfork for us, right? And that, in hindsight, could open things up for Jerry Hughes. Because Jerry Hughes, let's call it, let's call it what it is, man. The last two years, he's only got 10 sacks. But two years before that, he had 19.5 sacks in two years combined. So 20 sacks, nine sacks in one year, 9.5 sacks in one year, and 10 sacks the next. And then two years following that, four sacks and six sacks or something ridiculous, or five and five. Anyway. What I'm trying to say is this. He is going to have an opportunity to tie up people, tie up the run game, which will allow our, our running our linebackers to fly around. But most importantly, it's going to allow Jerry Hughes to get back to freaking 2013, 2014 form uh, because that's the Jerry Hughes that we need. That's the Jerry Hughes that we paid to get. Um, now, granted, I'm not going to shit on Jerry Hughes because the man uh, can definitely play the run game very well. But the pass rush is what we need from him. So that's where we got our guy from the Redskins. And I still don't freaking remember his name. Golly, he's got the big old beard and speaks really monotone. Anyway, y'all already know who I'm talking about. So um, so that's Murphy for crying out loud. Jeez. So, yeah, we picked up Murphy. So Murphy will then be that guy. The guy runs a 4-7. The guy had eight sacks before he got hurt last year in, in uh, the first game of the, pre- of the season. So, even Redskins fans are like, yo, why didn't we re-sign that guy, man? This guy was a baller when he was playing for us. Guess what? We now have a pass rush on both sides, which still makes me wonder. We paid him three-year, $21 million, right? But, yeah, we're going to keep Lawson, and we're going to keep Jerry Hughes. I never believe everything that people say. For now, they're not being moved. But if someone calls and gives the right offer, believe me, one of those guys are going to be moved. Lawson could be one of them. But if Lawson isn't, Lawson better bust his ass this year. I'm saying that right now, he better bust his ass because what we got the year before, that his rookie year, granted, we'll call that a wash because he was hurt and all that good stuff. Um, this, the year after that, nah, man, there was games where you're like, yo, you had four sacks that year, but I can, I know for a fact two of those sacks that you got last year, maybe two, two and a half of them, they fell in your lap, like Jason Strahan. They fell right in your lap. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'll credit that to you, but, I mean, at the end of the day, you didn't, you didn't bust your ass for that. The quarterback just fell right in your lap because the pressure was coming from the other side. I digress. But anyway, so we got Starla Tulele that's going to tie up things. So did we pay a little more a little more for him? Maybe we did. 50 mil, 25 mil guaranteed. Um, I think we could have paid a little less for him. But, I mean, hey, um, if he comes in and gives us his rookie form where he had a monster year, we got like six, six or six sacks that year. If we can get that out of that guy, my man, we good. So you got Lawson, Hughes, uh, Murphy, Latulele. Kyle Williams on his last year. So look for us to draft a defensive tackle as well because you know Kyle's gone next year. I mean, I mean, he was contemplating on retiring this year. So the fact is, he may be gone next year. He will be gone next year. So we will need to bring somebody else in. So look for this draft. 
for us to bring somebody in to replace him. So Starlo Tulele still maintains his run stuffing, tie up double teams, and let my pass rushing defensive tackle get after it, whoever we decide to draft. That's that. Um, Murphy, he's just going to get after the quarterback, man. That boy has a nice first step. If you guys look at film of this by playing, he could play. And he's going to get after the quarterback and get TFLs. If you don't know what TFLs are, tackle for loss. He's going to be all up in that backfield and exactly what we need. We need that. Um, so who's to say AJ can't pass for 3,600 yards and 20 touchdowns? Way better than last year's stats we got from QB and we filled holes. Why won't, why don't, sorry, why won't that equal 10, 11 wins? It can. Listen, we got into the playoffs with what, nine, nine, 10 wins? So we very well can get into the playoffs with 10 to 11. We can. You know what I'm saying? The Dolphins don't look to be getting any stronger. You know what I'm saying? They look like they've actually, they actually have gotten weaker. Um, and the Jets are putting together a damn team. So, listen, the AFC East, I've always said it, I think is one of the tougher, the tougher divisions to play with because we always play everybody tough in that division. But, I mean, maybe I'm biased. I'm biased because I just know what that division entails. You got Brady. You got to deal with whoever they're going to bring in uh, at quarterback for the Jets because you know they're drafting it. So, we're going to see, man. We're going to see. Let me see. Let me, I'm just going to take a few more questions because I've been going live for 42 damn minutes, and I got to appreciate the love that you guys are supporting right now. For 42 minutes, you guys are rocking with your boy. So that either tells me you got nothing to do on this Saturday morning or I'm hot right now. One of the two. Anyway, uh, what do we got? What do we got? Let me get Tim Ostrander says, McCarron keeps Peterman low on the depth chart and gives good competition for the rookie. I think if the Bills get in the top 10, they'll get a stud QB. Seven would be ideal pick in my opinion because we won't have to give up as much as getting in front of the Jets pick into two. Uh, and we'll be able to still get a good middle linebacker in the draft. Your thoughts? Um, I agree about the we we should we don't need to really jump into to the number two pick. Uh, what I disagree about is that McCarron is going to keep Peterman on the low on the depth charts. You guys are sleeping on Peterman. I'm telling you right now, you're sleeping on Nate Peterman. Nate Peterman was going to be the starter. I'm going to repeat this. He would have been the starter – if he did not get hurt in that Colts game when he went diet, when he dove head first in two freaking two linebackers that are 240 pounds. Um, if he stayed in that game, we would have won decisively, number one. And number two, Tyra would have never got his job back because it just would have been Peterman's job to lose. And that Colts game, he was marching the ball. He was making things happen. Um, and that would have been the end of Tyra. But it worked out well for us because we got a third round pick for Tyra because A, he got his position back. He beat the Dolphins. We get into the playoffs, um, and he pulls a dud. He pulls a tie rod in the playoffs. Anyway, I digress, but that's what it is. But um, Tim Ostrander, that was a great. That's a great question. Uh, as for middle linebacker, we definitely need a will, uh, middle linebacker. Uh, will Compton is definitely something that we're looking at right now. Um, but there it is, Jim Sanderson, my man. I appreciate you. Um, who do we got? Jim Sanderson, Trent Murphy. Thank you, man. I'm way. I'm way behind. I got to catch up to all these questions. Uh, Jim Sanders says, Peter Mania, I am not sleeping on anything. Good. Don't sleep on Peter Mania. NPP, the Nate Peterman process is still intact. I'm telling you right now, it's still intact. And when you guys see Nate Peterman potentially becomes the starting quarterback of the Buffalo Bills this year, you can at me and say, Rico, just three words. You were right. That's all you got to say. That's all you got to say. Just at me and say, you were right. I'll know what you guys are talking about. I'll know what you guys are talking about. People don't want to hear that, though. They don't want to hear that. They want to, they want to hear that, oh, he's trash, he's this, he threw five interceptions. Yo, get out of here with that. Uh, Michael Dickerson says, yes, I'm sleeping on Peterman. Yes, you are sleeping. You better wake up. Wake up, everybody. Don't sleep on Peterman. I'm telling you right now, don't sleep on that man. Uh, AJ is a beast. Um, and you know what? I think AJ will do well. I really do think he does well. And if he becomes the starter and Nate Peterman loses out to him and, and, and the rookie doesn't show enough, or they don't trust enough, they don't trust the rookie enough, cool. I'm good with McCarron starting because you know he can play in this game. He can play in this league. Jim Sanderson in the Facebook group, if you guys are not following our Facebook group, by the way, shame on you, jump on that. Uh, it's, one of the, it's actually the best uh, Facebook group that's out there. Um, I'm being biased, obviously. But um, Jim Sanderson uh, came up with uh, a nugget that people are overlooking. And I don't, I'm not going to quote it because I don't remember it well, but everybody was drooling all over uh, Jimmy Garoppolo because he went 5-0 and and threw for X amount of yards and this amount of touchdowns, um, and, and they're drooling over that. McCarron did the same thing. 
same stature in terms of size, same everything, same stats, same completion percentage, same everything. But the name is sexier than Adrian McCarron's name. That's and that's the thing, man. People just love love to look at you know the the stardom of certain things, right? He was on the Patriots and he did well for the Patriots. And nobody's sleeping on Jimmy Garoppolo, by the way. Jimmy can play, but can't. So can McCarron. Maybe we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Thank you for that nugget, Jim Sanderson, because that was key. Um, what do we got? What do we got? Um, Jim Sanderson says, not that I would be dead set against drafting a quarterback, but I would be happy going into training camp with NP and, and AJ. I agree. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not losing sleep over that. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, Jordan Smith says probably yeah. should try trading with the Colts when we had the chance. Yeah, but we don't know what the Colts wanted. I mean, obviously we we see what they wanted, but was McBean ready to give all that up? That's the question. Because McBean, I'm telling you right now, Brandon Bean likes his picks. He's not just giving those picks away just to get um. I mean, get to that number three spot. But anyway, he probably chose to 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 duck on that, and they probably went with the Jets. I bet you there was a bidding war. Because two days ago, there was a lot of chatter going on that Bills were in deep discussion and nobody was really saying anything. So I bet you it was a bidding war between the Jets and the Bills. And Brandon was like, nah, too steep, man. Y'all, you you and the Jets can make your moves. I'll, I'll, I'll stay at 12 and I'll work, my, I'll work my angles the way I want to. Because I know the guy that I want and we'll go from there. I think that's exactly what happened. That's just my opinion. Leroy Winslow says... But he played on the Bengals. If you swap the two, it would have been AJ talked about and Jimmy with the questions. It's all about where he came from and all the hype that he gets and so on and so forth. I mean, let's call it, let's keep it real, man. When you play on the Patriots, y'all look, you look good no matter what. For crying out loud, Matt Castle looked good. You know what I'm saying? Even Joe, and I'm not shitting on Jacoby Brissett, but Jacoby Brissett looked pretty damn good himself. He looked all right. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mallet, for the little time that Mallet got on the field with the Patriots, didn't look like trash, but I'm just saying, maybe it's a system thing. Maybe it's a system thing, and that's why uh, Jimmy Garoppolo did very well. So if you swap Jimmy Garoppolo and you put in Agent McCarron, Agent McCarron would have been the guy that's all you know. What I mean, la di da. So I think we got. I think we got to steal with Agent McCarron on our squad. Um, Jim Sanderson says Brady was Bledsoe's backup. So what's the point? Oh, you're talking to somebody else. I got you. But anyway, um, so folks, this is where we're at, man. So if you guys are just joining right now, let me just recap what I spoke about. Uh, I spoke about uh, the Jets moving into number three and how it impacts the Bills and how they're going to pick. Um, and it all comes down to where the Jets or who the Jets are going to start picking at quarterback. And in my opinion, I think it's going to be between Mayfield and Rosen. And I think they like Rosen, um, but they could very much go Mayfield as uh, Ro um, Rosen as well. So that leaves us in a decent position because I think Darnold goes to the Browns and then opens up things up. I don't know if the Giants go quarterback. I think the Giants may go running back. They need a running back. You need a running back. You need one. In this game, in, in this day and age, you can't win games in this NFL without having a good running back. So whenever people say, but you can find a running back in the 12th round, in the 16th round, I'm exaggerating clearly, but that's, that's what it sounds like to me. You can find those guys anywhere. You can't because every year these guys are drafting another running back because they're looking for that guy that can carry the load and get paid money. McCoy, find me another McCoy. Find me another Le'Veon Bell. Find me another David Johnson. You feel what I'm saying? Like those guys, they don't just grow on trees, man. You got some really good running backs, but you don't just, you don't have guys that can just really, you can count on. McCoy can take his 60 yards anytime. You just don't know when. You know what I'm saying? Clutch. You need guys like that. I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. Um, what do you go? I'm going to take a few more questions and I'm going to get out of here because I've been here talking way too long. But if, if you guys are good with me, keep going and I'll answer questions. I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm only staying for the people, for the people. Let me see what we got. Keanu, what's going on, man? Lamar at 12. Yo, if that's how it falls, if it's between Lamar and Allen, I'll take Lamar. I'll take Lamar all day. That's just me though. I think Lamar gives, I think he gives us the same throwing throwing ability as as Allen. Allen has a stronger arm, obviously. Um, but I think he gives us the same accuracy. It's on paper. <laughs> Y'all know what it is. Actually, one has more accuracy than the other. And when it comes to athletic ability, I'll take Allen hands down. So if it's on the 12th pick, who we picking? I would take Jackson. But I I feel the Bills like Allen. I feel the Bills like Allen. Um, time for BBB to work his magic. If you guys aren't familiar with BBB, 
let me just give you guys a quick little something and I get back into it. Uh, if you guys go on our, Bill, our Buffalo Fanatics fan shop, we have our T-shirts that you guys have seen us rocking, MPP, 17 and done. I don't have any of my shirts here. But anyway, um, and the newest one is um, the BBB. It's the, it's the Big Baller Bean. Because right now, Bean has been doing what he needs to do to make things happen. Who would have thunk that he moved from 21st to, to 12th and given up Cordy Glenn without any financial ramifications? He said, yo, take all of that financials and give me your 12th pick. And it happened. So you can't go wrong with that. Big Baller Bean is making things happen. And if you guys cop that shirt, I'm telling you right now, you're going to get a lot of love because when you go to training camp, for those that go to training camp, you he sees that Big Baller Bean shirt, he's going to be like, yo, that's BF all day. That's the thing, man. Ain't nobody, ain't no other brand that's out there that's, that's pushing stuff out like that, man. Making fun, making, making, making things fun, man. Real talk. Anyway, back to football talk. Uh, Jamie Oscar says, looking at the draft board, how many QBs do you think uh, do you guys think will go before 12? Right now, realistically speaking, Donald, Rosen. So three quarterbacks may be gone in the first three. In the first, with the first three picks. Because some people think Denver is going to still take a quarterback. So we don't know. Uh, it's between two and three. Two and three quarterbacks will be gone in the first first 10 picks. So that's why you can't really sit on your hands too long, depending if you think that the team is going to take the guy you want then you go. Now, if Brandon Bean is comfortable enough to sit on his hands and say, I don't care which one of these guys go because I have a similar grade on every one of them, then I'll take whoever is there. Because I'll tell you right now, if one guy was head above, head of, head and head and heels, head and heels, what do you get? Head above everybody else. I don't know if it's the same, but if one quarterback was head above everybody else, then every mock draft would have that one guy going number one. But I've seen Darnold go as low as five to six. I've seen Mayfield number one. I've seen Jackson number one. I've seen Allen number one. So if there was such a one guy that was the guy, I've seen Rosen number one as well. So it goes to tell you that it's a mixed bag. So they may just say, I'm chilling at 12, and I'll wait whoever drops there. Whoever drops there, I'm good. You feel me? So, and that's the thing. And keep in mind, keep this in mind too. They may be at 12, and the scenario doesn't work out the way they wanted to, right? Because you know they have a big board. So the big board's sitting there. Bean, McBean is sitting there looking at the big board and say, all right, the Jets took this. Denver took a quarterback. Shit, this, this, that. Yo, let's just fall back. Let's just tr just trade back and acquire more picks. Because there might be a guy they don't like. And they say, you know what? Our fallback plan is Jackson. Our fallback plan is Rudolph. Our fallback plan is McCarron. So we don't really give a damn what quarterback is there. Keep that in mind as well. These GMs, man, they, they, they could be all over the place, man. Thank you, Jim Sanderson. Head and shoulders. <laughs> I said head and heels. What the hell? Um, <laughs> thank you very much, sir. Um, but, y'all, but does that make sense, what I'm saying? Because those are the very things that can happen. The board can change up like you would not believe. I remember when we were about to pick, uh, I think it was the, the draft, the, I think the, the draft that we took a uh, EJ, EJ Manuel, I thought we were going to actually grab Tavon Austin. That's who I thought we were going to grab. And then we traded down. Um, and we traded up, excuse me, to to get out of that, and we picked up EJ Gaines, um, EJ EJ Manuel. But that's how things can happen, where you think you're gonna be, you're on the clock, and then something changes, and some team moves up out of nowhere and screws your whole thing up. So I know that for sure they have a contingency plan on if this scenario happens, we will fall back on this guy because we guarantee we know this guy's gonna be there. So maybe it's Rudolph, maybe it's Laletta. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, the Bills have shown a lot of interest, low-key, on Lawletta. So if we don't pick a quarterback in the first 10, 15 picks, you can, you can bet your bottom dollar we're trading back, acquiring picks, and picking Lawletta. Because a lot of people are, are comparing Lawletta to Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't forget, man, Buffalo Fanatics, we have a lot of ties, and we, have, we talk to a lot of people that are in the know of certain things. So there's some things, there's some nuggets that are dropped on us here and there. We can't share them all. We share the things that we can, but there are some things that's out there. So don't, don't, uh, don't doubt that we fall back and we require someone in the second round, like a, I don't know, a Ferguson or uh, a freaking Mike White. I'm just putting it out there for you guys. Bobby Hansen says, "What do you think we'll we'll do at 22?" I personally hope Will Fernandez. Uh, Will Fernandez, Will Fernandez at 22? Why not? That would be dope. I'd like to grab a linebacker. Personally, I'd like a linebacker to be there. 
um, that dude from Alabama. I think it's, uh, I forgot, it. Roquan Smith. Is it Roquan yeah. Smith? That dude from Alabama can go sideline to sideline. We need a guy that can go sideline to sideline and ball out. That's what we need. Uh, what do we got? James Butler says, it's just, it's just such a high price to move up now. If the Bills were just a QB away from being a playoff team, that would be one thing. But just think, is a team that far away from that? Uh, is that is a team is yeah. is a team that further away from that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. If it comes down to getting your franchise guy that changes the whole game, that changes your franchise, that changes your city, that changes the division, yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna say that one more time. Yes, I'm telling you, man. Like that, like that wrestler from WWE. Yes, yes, yes. I'm telling you that right now. Real talk. Uh, Leroy Wills, uh, Leroy Winslow says, Layden Vander Esch is the man. Him and Tremaine Edmonds. I've heard Edmonds. I've heard that name a lot. Uh, we were in the playoffs last year. Mm, I, Jim Sanderson, did we make the playoffs last year? I can't remember. I can't remember if we did or not. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows if we did? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate the time. I appreciate the love. If you guys, before y'all get out of here, press the share button right this second. Allow someone on their way to work, on the way to a trip, or sitting at home doing nothing. Share this page so they can actually see all this. And they can chime in. We want to grow the community. And the more we share, the more we love, and the better it is for the Buffalo Fanatics community to get bigger and bigger and bigger. We will be the biggest thing. I'm telling you right now, we're only getting better. We're only getting bigger. And that's what we want out of this crew. So I appreciate each and every one of y'all tuning in, asking questions. I apologize once again if I did not get to your questions because these things fire away like you wouldn't believe. Um, so I do my best to try to answer, but I do appreciate it. Um, so, and even as I'm talking right now, I'm seeing some more questions come in. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to sign off by doing this. Follow our page on Twitter, Buffalo fanatics. Follow me on Twitter, real Rico underscore BF. Hit us up on YouTube. Our YouTube page is growing as we speak. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, share it and be one of them. I'm going to try to post a video today. Another thing, if you guys are looking to get uh, paraphernalia and shirts and all that stuff, hit up our BF Fan shop. Those are where we can get all the shirts. A lot of people ask me, yo, where'd you get your shirt, Rico? There's where I got it, the BF Fan Shop. Number two, y'all got to respect the process. Trust the process. We know it seems like the bean, and they know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? We can do, this is what fans do. We talk about what the possibilities are, but no matter what, we're going to have to get behind. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull this out right now. We're going to have to rally around the quarterback that we go, and we're going to just have to do it rally around the quarterback whoever it may be it may be me if i'm the quarterback that they decide to phone me up and say bean says yo rico we need someone i say i'm right there so if i'm the quarterback for the buffalo bills y'all better y'all better root for me man <laughs> don't be don't be wearing no paper bags once i'm in one i'm once i'm under center but anyway that being said show love continue to show love we appreciate you guys we're trying to bring as much content as possible this is the one stop shop for playoff talk i can say that now by the way uh, free agency talk, draft talk, all the talk, and anything that comes up, we're here to talk about it. Keep showing love. Share this feed like I asked. Please and thank you. It's your boy. Guess what? And I'm gone. Bye.